Hey guys, this is Tyler again with NoobGrammar.com. Uh, I've done a little bit of rebranding to the blog. Uh, I think it looks a lot better. So if you want to go check that out and let me know what you think, that'd be awesome. Uh, let's get started with this video. So this one's going to be a supplementary video to the RSS Aggregator series. Uh, we're going to be using something called the Configuration Manager to manage our saved feeds uh, for our users uh, in that series. So I wanted to kind of pull this one out on its own because there's just a lot of stuff going on here. So let's go ahead and create our Visual Studio solution. We're going to need a class library and a console app in this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the class library first. And I'm just going to call it Configuration Manager Playground. Now let's add the console application. Let's call this one Configuration Manager Test. So what we've really done here is set up a simple test environment uh, so that whenever we write our configuration manager stuff, uh, we'll have the console app already ready to go so that we can run some tests on it and make sure our functions are working like they're supposed to. It's not quite unit testing. Uh, that's something I could cover in a whole new video. Uh, but for the purposes of what we're doing here, I think this will work just fine. So before I explain what the configuration manager does, uh, there's one more thing we need to do to our console app. So right click on it, go to properties, go down to settings. Now the only thing we see here is a button that says we need to basically create our default settings file. So let's go ahead and click on that to create it. And now we see the settings.settings .settings file uh, has been added to our solution. So what this file does is it acts as a wizard uh, for us to add settings to our app.config uh, file. So let's go ahead and add one here. Call it global path. Keep it a string. Uh, we want it to be application wide. Let's go ahead and give it a value. Okay. Hit enter. Now if we go to our app.config file, we will see an element that has been added here that represents the path we created. So this is just one way you can create settings for your app to use. Uh, the other way is going to be what we're going to be actually talking about in this video and that's going to be the configuration manager. The configuration manager will create a .config file. Uh, for testing purposes, uh, the, you can find it in the bin slash debug folder uh, and it's just the name of your app uh, .exe .config. and if we open it and look at it here uh, you can see there's just a few keys here and then each key has a related data attribute or value attribute and that's how we're going to be pulling settings uh, and adding settings for this project so let's finally start writing some code here uh, we can close out of that close out of that uh, yeah we'll go ahead and save it uh, so for our actual configuration manager. Uh, let's go ahead and change the name of this class to manager. Yes. Let's go ahead and get our two projects talking to each other. So let's go ahead and add a constructor here. And we just want to tell it to write something to the console uh, whenever this class is created or an instance of this class is created. Save it. Let's go to our program uh, file. And remember, this is part of the console application. And then new manager. Oh, IntelliSense is 
not playing nicely. And we've got to fix this quickly. And we want to add the reference to the project. And it adds the using directive for us too. Now we need to make sure that our project is set to open as the console application. Change it to test. And finally we can test it. And we have this nice little command prompt that shows us that our class was initiated. And then we can just close it. And I need to change this because I did not do a very good job. Initiated. Okay. I'm also going to add a second class into this manager.cs file. Uh, I'm just going to paste it in here. And this class really isn't important. Um, it's just something I'm going to use so that whenever we start writing our configuration manager stuff, uh, we'll have something to add and remove and update and delete and all that stuff. And as you can see, it's just a class item that has a key and then the data uh, that's going to be associated with that key. And a little bit of a disclaimer here, this tutorial is loosely based on a Microsoft tutorial uh, that I'll link to in the description as well. Um, basically, I just needed to find the code that I could use to actually access the uh, config file and make our changes. So let's get started with it. Now with the way the config manager works, uh, we want to make sure that all of the items that are going into uh, our configuration are unique. So let me paste a function over here. Now well, this function uh, is unique. It takes a key as a parameter or a string as a parameter and then we're going to look into our configuration manager and if we can't find the key then obviously it's unique. If we do find it then it's false and we don't want to try to add another one to it. Uh, let's go ahead and fix this squiggly. Okay, we can't do it there. Uh, let's go over to our application, go down to references, right click, add reference. And then in our, in the, I believe it's the framework, so system.configuration. Let's check it, hit OK. Now we should be able to, no, oh, add reference. Yes. There we go. Maybe. OK. Now let's add our add function. And again, I'm just copying and pasting this stuff in because it's a whole lot easier and it makes things go a lot smoother. Um, so we're going to add an item. Uh, we're going to run it through our isUnique method. Uh, if it is unique, then we can go ahead and add it. If it's not, we need to throw a, con uh, throw a new exception uh, that basically gives the developer some information on what went wrong. Now, this is part of the, the uh, stuff that I borrowed from the Microsoft tutorial. Uh, so var config and var settings are just holder variables that makes accessing these things a little bit quicker. So config, uh, we're just going to open the uh, configuration file that I showed you earlier and we're going to open it at the level of all users so you could have let's see there's a dot per user roaming and per user roaming and local and if you know anything about like the app data folder structure um, basically you would have it store those files in there uh, but for this tutorial we're just going to use none and then settings just holds the, it's just a quicker way to access the dot syntax that actually gets us to the settings that we can modify and change uh, in the config variable. And then settings.add is where we're actually adding the setting. And then config.save, uh, as you might imagine, this just saves the information we added. And then configuration manager.refresh section. Um, to the best of my understanding, this basically says, hey, uh, I've done something something to this file. You probably need to reopen it and reread it uh, before you start making changes to it again. OK, 
Okay, let's go ahead and add our remove function. And we have the same config and settings variables as we did in the previous one. Uh, so the first thing we're doing is we're checking to make sure that the key that we're passing in actually exists. Um, and that's what this not equal null is for. Um, if it doesn't exist, then we want to throw a configuration, a new exception, configuration errors exception, again, that just says, hey, this key doesn't exist. Um, but if it does exist, then we're going to use settings.remove to remove it. Uh, then we're going to save it, and then we're going to refresh it again. Let's add our update function. So what this update function does is it takes the old item and the new item, and of course we're checking again to make sure that the item actually exists. If it doesn't, we're going to throw an error. Um, if it does exist, but the old item key is not equal to the new item key, and that could happen, let's say you want to change the key that's associated with some data. Um, in that case, we're not really going to update anything. We're just going to remove the old key, and then we're going to add the new key or new item. And then, barring all that, if, you have the, if you're modifying the same key, and you just want to change you just want to change the data then we're going to set that item uh, that matches the old key to the new item and then we're going to save and refresh our configuration again. So there's only two more functions we need to add here. The first one is going to be a list function and what this list function does is it's going to return a list of all of our items uh, and it's not going to be a list of app settings um, we're going to actually create instances of the items and hold all of that information here so that if we ever need to access it later uh, it's a whole lot easier and we don't have to do any conversion at that point so we're just going to create a list of items and then we're using configuration manager dot app settings here instead of the open exe configuration because we don't need to actually open this file and make any changes we just need to read from it so we can create our items based off that key and then the value associated with that key and that's pretty much what this loop is doing uh, we're just looping through all the keys and then again we're just making our items and then we're just going to return that list of items so finally the last method that we need is the get item method and as you can imagine this just allows us to get an item representation uh, at a particular key in our settings. So again, we're going to open up the app settings. Uh, well, we're not going to open it. We're just going to read from it with this variable. And then we want to make sure that the key we're trying to find is not null. And of course, if it is, then the item doesn't exist. And we want to throw a new exception uh, that says that. And then if it does exist, then we just want to return a new item that is created uh, based off the data in that setting. Okay, now that we've got our manager class written, we've got to write our program uh, that actually tests all of these cases. Let's go ahead and save this. Switch to our program. Now, I've got all of this already written. Um, let me go ahead and copy and paste it in. Uh, there's a lot. Then we want to change this to manager, manager equals new manager. Okay. Oh, and we need to fix a couple squigglies here. Okay, Let's save it. So there's a lot going on here, and I'm not going to talk about all of it. Um, this code will be up on GitHub, so if you want to uh, pull it down and kind of go through line by line what this is doing uh, be, be my guest but basically all we're doing here is creating a bunch of test cases uh, and writing some feedback to the console uh, for each one of our methods that we wrote in the manager class um, now this would be a good use uh, a good example of when you could use unit testing to do this but 
that's a whole nother video um, and I think this fits better into the scope of what we're doing in this video there is one thing I want to mention uh, if you remember way back in the beginning of the video we talked about global settings uh, and using the settings settings file and this line the console.write line test settings whatever uh, properties.settings.default.globalpath that's pretty much how we access that uh, setting that we created in that fashion and you could create more settings and settings.default.whatever that new setting is and access them that way so let's go ahead and run this and see what it does um, I want to bring a folder over so you can see what happens let me minimize this Okay. now this folder is the debug folder for this particular project so now if we bring the folks back to our Visual Studio instance and run it you can see that .config file is created now if we look at our application uh, we can see that we found the global path uh, our initial configuration there's nothing there because we've not ran this before and then we do all of our tests and then this is what our final configuration looks like then if we open this config file now we can see that all of these keys have been added so let's go ahead and close it and okay we're done with that let's go ahead and open this maximize this back up and let's run it again now our output looks a whole lot different um, this is our initial configuration we're trying to add all these keys but we can't because they already exist uh, and that's pretty much it alright guys thanks for watching I hope you like this video there will be a link to a related blog post on noobgamer.com uh, about this video and all the code is on github and I'll post a link to that as well and then that Microsoft tutorial uh, will be down there too. Alright, if you guys want to check out noobgrammar.com, I'd appreciate it. Thanks.